Hi, this is Mike at Design Point. I want to take just a few minutes to look with you at some of the rendering capabilities that we have in 3D via Composer. Uh, if you're not familiar with Composer, this is a program that lets you take your uh, native 3D CAD files, things like SolidWorks files or Inventor files, and create marketing and technical documentation with them. Now one of the things we can do with Composer is put together some real nice sharp marketing type images. Um, so here we're looking at an RC car and we don't really have many fancy tools in Composer turned on yet. Uh, I just want to look with you at two tools in this particular session. Uh, the first one is perspective. So as we look at this car I can rotate this guy around um, and it looks pretty nice but it looks pretty similar to what it might look like in a program like SolidWorks. Um, if I go ahead and turn on perspective here, and then we'll zoom out a little bit, we get a much more realistic look um, it, where the car is actually fading into the background a little bit. Um, it's looking a lot more realistic. Um, perspective is just a little button down here that you can turn on and off. <coughs> so you can see the difference between with it on and off. Uh, but in, in 3D via Composer here, we also have some control over how much perspective is applied to the model. Um, and we can do that by coming up here to File, Preferences, and on this Camera tab, we've got Default Perspective set to 45 degrees. And just to show you the difference, let's go ahead and take this up to say 180 degrees. When I do that, you can see that the car's really disappeared into the background there. And we'll just zoom that out toward us. And you can see that that's just a very drastic amount of perspective applied to the car. Uh, obviously, that doesn't look right and isn't right for the situation. But just showing you that you can come in here to Preferences and Camera and play around with these degrees to get just the amount of perspective that you want. So we'll go ahead and set that back to 45, which is a pretty typical uh, perspective. And we'll go ahead now and look at the next thing that I want to focus on, which is the depth of field option. So I'm on my render tab. I've got lots of things that I can do up here. Um, but what I want to focus on right now is depth of field. I'm going to go ahead and change my mode to smooth with outline, just so you can see the difference there. Um, this is just a way to go ahead and, and make some very general overall changes to um, the style of the lines that you're presenting in Composer. Um, so we'll go ahead and set that back to smooth here. I just wanted you to be aware of that. And now we'll go ahead to depth of field. Now when I turn on depth of field and I click on here to set a focal point, I'm just going to drag my focal point and it's going to recognize the geometry and this is where I want the camera to zoom in on. So let's just angle this a little bit and maybe I really want to zoom in kind of up here on the front quarter of this car. Now the confusing thing is I can go ahead and set my focal point um, and nothing really changes. Uh, the thing you need to know is that you want to come in here to File, Preferences and we're going to go to this Viewport tab and here we have depth of field and you want this to be changed to on idle. Use document settings on idle. And we'll apply that. And that's just going to make that change take effect instantly. So you can see that I've got my focal point set right here and I've got a nice clear picture up there and everything else is sort of fading out as if a picture has been taken that's focusing on that particular spot. Um, I can at any point go ahead and grab my focal point and move it somewhere else. And I'm going to see that take effect as well. Now when we have depth of field turned on and nothing, not, none of our geometry selected, uh, we'll come over here in the property manager and we can see that we've got a spot down here for controlling the depth of field. So here we've, we've got it enabled. I can always uncheck that to turn it off. And then I've got these two options here, level and number of passes. So the level is going to determine uh, how blurry the 
parts that are out of focus become. So I can always just grab my slide bar here and slide that. And you can see I went from 0.01 to 0.02, and that made a pretty substantial difference. Um, but if I want to make just minor tweaks to it and I'm having trouble controlling the bar here, I can always type right in here too. Now it's going to round off to the to the hundredth, but you can see it's showing 0.01, but if I type in 0.01, that actually made it a little bit fuzzier. If I come in here again and type in 0.065, it's still going to show, oops, i got to put in 0.0065 it's still going to show 0.01 but you can see it's a little less fuzzy there uh, on that front wheel so that just gives you a little bit better control by typing the number in directly the number of passes is the number of internal renderings that 3D Via Composer uses to create the depth of field um, and the more passes the better result so here I just drag the slide bar around and you can typically not see a lot of difference when you go to a higher quality so I tend to keep that fairly low uh, just to keep my resource usage down um, but if you uh, drag that around you may see a little bit better quality result especially depending how you're focused in and zoomed in on a certain area so hopefully that helps you a little bit as you start using perspective and depth of field to create just the effect that you want Look for more posts from me about using some of the other rendering tools to come very shortly. Thanks very much.